Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Guile here, and welcome to another Supreme Commander epic. That's right, it's the time of the month when replays last just a little bit longer than usual, so you know what to do if you haven't got time to watch it now. Dump it in your Watch Later playlist on YouTube and catch it when you have the opportunity. But the astute of you will immediately notice out there I have finally found a cast worthy or a replay worthy of a Setons cast. Setons! Dun, dun, dun. It's going to be custom 4v4. We do have a couple of pros in residence today, but otherwise it is going to going to be an average Joe affair. Those masters of mediocrity return once more to show us that not everything in nature is beautiful. We'll call this team one up here at the top, this team two down here at the bottom going first rear guard position for team one in cyanide cyan going Aeon how terribly sensible it's a UD but not as you know him this is not the actual UD this is a quick look up here we'll tell you it's a cheap imposter bless him i don't know what the b means maybe it's 4chan's answer to ud but he's a mere 1300 as opposed to the 2300 or something that ud should be uh, there he is anyway we wish him all the luck nonetheless he's going first land team member number two down here at the cliffs for team one it's uh, sauron's lesser known lesser talented younger twin brother gauron there he is going uef sauron went off to evil arts college gauron stayed at home to market his uh, cannabis themed meme crypto coin anyway here he is <laughs> where i'm going with this going uef in ferrari red opening first land on to the causeway for team one in breast cancer awareness pink we have polenkin there he is going uef how terribly sensible opening first land and last but not least for team one over at the beach in regal purple uh, Aussie fan, or maybe an Aussie person himself. It's Waltzing Matilda. There we go. He's going Aeon opening. That seems wrong with a name like Matilda. Could well be a girl, but let's face it, very few are on the whole uh, Sopcom front. Anyway, he's going Aeon, as we said, Regal Purple opening first land. So that's Team 1 sorted. The racial setups to UEF and to Aeon. Checking out Team 2 now, rear guard air position to begin with, starting with Mr. Shady sporting this season's fabulous, vivacious Violet. Going UEF opening first air. Sensible decision. Checking out uh, team member number two for team two in Elephant Time Grey going Cybrin but named Rambo Turtle. There's an oxymoronic statement for you. He is going first land, second air there next to the Hydro. Team member number three for team two on the causeway. It's put out our first Seraphim of the day. This time a baby blue and going land all day as you would expect from a causeway player. And last but not least, over at the beach for team two in Halle Borange Orange. We've got Johnny Flash. There he is, another Seraphim in, uh, yeah, as we said, Halle Boring George opening first land. So there we have it. Two Seraphim, a UEF, and a Cybrin for Team 2. Gain quality at 86%. Uh, could be better, but yeah, we'll deal with it. We'll live with it. Won't spoil the game for us. The top rated players, people to look out for, are the Causeway Chaps. There we go, right the way down the center. So the map is at least balanced nicely. We've got a 1800 there from put out on team two and a 1500 on team one for palenkin there we go so potentially an advantage on that side of things uh, on the other side of things people to look out for poor old garon as we said lesser talented younger brother of sauron a mere 100 so this could be a weak point for team one so they're giving up ranking points on the causeway and uh, potentially in the bottom pond more generally so we'll see how that works out look what we have here well looky what we have here answers in the comment section below if you know what film that's from an 80s classic that's the only clue i'm going to give you uh, a transport away for waltzy matilda who's going to try and steal the uh, side island, the natural expansion of Rambo Turtle. Rambo Turtle, who's working on his own transport, but is somewhat off the pace. We'll see if Waltzy Matilda is successful there in just a moment. Checking in on the Causeway Chaps, put out, and Bolenkin getting some Scoopy Scooperson on. Palenkin taking the lion's share of the damage in this initial exchange, but he seems much more concerned with scooping as much mass as possible. We'll have a check back in with these guys in just a moment to see who actually fared better in the initial exchanges. Oh, and a saucy little Selen there from put out to add just a little bit more damage onto Palenkin, who's now gone into the yellow. 8,500 hit points for him. Transport away. Two engineers on the ground for Matilda on the side island, already getting to work on a land factory. And here is the counter transport laden with considerably more engineers on board 
than Matilda provided. What have we got? Something in the region of five units of build capacity. Definitely doesn't want to hang about. Does Turtle have any idea of the threat? Well, he will now as a uh, interceptor hoofs into range, gets a visual cue. So he'll be aware of the threat. He'll also be aware of the engineer advantage he's got. And immediately he completes that land factory and goes straight for a T1 point defense. A couple of inbound engineers about to get eradicated for their trouble. First offensive unit out of that factory from Matilda was an Aurora, but that gets gunned down immediately. And uh, with this advantage now on the engineer side of things, I would expect Rambo Turtle to pull ahead on that one. Johnny Flash moved up to the center to join his teammate put out. That's definitely going to put out old Palenkin, who's already dipped back up into the top pond momentarily. He's down to around 5,800. That corresponds to about 40-45% of his base health. And the rest of the mass, which is that much, is probably, with the exception of a couple of... Uh, Rex on this side of things it's probably going to go over towards team two so far on the reclaim side of things uh, team one has fared better it's 8.1k versus 6.8k which is probably why Palenkin took on so much damage there he was more concerned with getting as much reclaim in the tech as possible apologies if I'm uh, still a little uh, full of cold guys hopefully it won't distract on the cast too much that's why you've been without castage for a couple of weeks it's not just you the poor old patrons have been on bread and water as well i had norovirus followed up immediately by tonsillitis so it's been a good week all over my uh, my birthday as well so good times <laughs> it is what it is those little uh, petri dishes of mucus that live in this house with me come home from school cough into your face whilst you least expect it standard upgrades going down in all of the right places there in the backfield for both of these chaps t2f factory on the way for ud sounds just wrong when i know it's not actually ud but <clears throat> Uh, somewhat off the pace though, Mr. Shady, going for T2 Engineering Suite on board his commander. But UD will be done with a T2 Land Factory, or sorry, Land Factory, Air Factory before too long. Already 85% complete and climbing. Lots of engineers nearby. So we could see an early advantage in the air game for Team 1 brewing up here. Now let's check in on the ponds, what's going down. On the aquatic side of things so Matilda has moved up with his ACU in the direction of the center of the map but he stopped kind of at a midpoint to spam up some extra naval yards got a lot of naval yards queued up in the main harbor area so currently he's got six online we've also got one two three four five six seven online on the other side of things for Rambo Turtle and incidentally the odd frigate that's actually traversed the pond already and is moving in to make life difficult for Matilda. A few engineers might get scuppered here. There we go. Nice little snag there. That'll be the end of all of the hopes and dreams for the rest of that little row naval yards that will not come to fruition put out and Johnny Flash with their ACUs in the center put out just bringing his comm over into range of this frigate now Matilda recognizing the danger and moving out of range put out subtle plan not so subtle so no play from Team 2 to uh, Gowron Side Island, which I must admit sort of surprises me. You would be looking at this and expecting a weak point. So maybe a drop would have been in order there, but instead we've actually got quite an aggressive drop from Flash looking to get right in the center over here with a whole bunch of engineers, but Matilda on it with air coverage shoots that transport down before those engineers can make landfall and 
There's good awareness from Team 1. Are they going to be aware about this, however? A second transport inbound, this time above the top pond. It's Rambo Turtle with six units on board, possibly all engineers. Looking to make a play just at the edge of these cliffs. There is a land factory nearby belonging to Matilda. And this will be the likely target. It's usually what happens when we get drops at this sort of location. Set up shop, a few factories, and first port of call. Put pressure up here and take out those three mexes. Speaking of pressure, Rambo Turtle doing a little less of the turtling and a little more of the naval denying. Moving straight in, wasting no time with a ton of frigates and subs. Going after these naval yards, Matilda trying to counter with a T1 torpedo launcher. It immediately gets, I wouldn't say incinerated, because the things really get incinerated when they're built in the ocean. Probably not, unless maybe an oil rig with a serious disaster. That is not what we're dealing with here, and Matilda doesn't like the look of it, so he's just going to bring his comm away from the danger zone. Meanwhile, another naval yard is kaput and the extra group of naval yards down here also under pressure from a second flotilla that is not looking particularly healthy from team one's perspective they are barely 11 minutes into this game and at risk of losing top pond and considering the caliber no offense gowron potential caliber of what they've got in the bottom pond that could be a death sentence in this game to lose both ponds so early doors. Decent number of subs in the bottom pond for Johnny Flash. He's going to get to critical mass and then possibly be able to shut this down. Team 1 going to be requiring Palenkin to at least pick one of these ponds to try and reinforce. It's not going to be easy now, though. They're going to be completely shut out of the top pond for the time being. There goes the last naval yard for Matilda, just as the frigate was about to complete. Wow, that's pretty successful. Next counter, some amphibious floaty, floaty, naughty, naughty from Matilda, spamming out some hover tanks. Sending those blazes in. Needs to get a fair few more of those operational before he's going to get any major payoff from that investment. Back in on the causeway now. Look at that. that was a forward tack missile launcher. No kills to its name as yet. And it doesn't look like he's going to get any. Nice little attack. Denies that threat combination of T1 and T2 spam here from Palenkin. Where did Johnny Flash pull his combat to? He's abandoned the center altogether. Feels like Put Out has all of the uh, tools and the experience to deal with that in the center. T2 engineering suite on board that Seraphim commander spamming up point defense forward his T1 spam just to give himself some leeway, some room to build these defences. Nice work on a few tactical missile defence turrets, being as we've got flapjack missile launchers in operation here. That's quite a funky little camera angle if I do say so myself. Not praised for my cinematography, I'm still waiting for uh, Golden Globe calling for some reason. Lovely little manoeuvre there by UD. Smashing down some of Flash's interceptors with his ASFs. And I didn't actually notice on that first pass we've got a strap bomber here who's already got 27 kills to his name. I'm wondering where we've got a Redundant mass point there, so that's a second one. 27 kills. Early strap bomber often 
an absolutely deadly weapon if you've got T3 air long before your opponent. Where is the T3 air for Team 2? Well, it's a ways off. 69% complete on that T3 upgrade. Mr. Shady, he's got some fusion reactors, so he'll be able to sustain some air production, but won't be as comfortable as he would have liked. Another lovely strap bomb. Takes out another mechs. This is not looking good for Team 2 generally. UD taking them apart here. 44 kills to its name now, that strap bomber. Mr. Shady, his income falling off a proverbial cliff right now, down to 93 mass per tick. To put that in perspective, UD is mirror air player on Team 1. Currently pulling in 156 to 160 mass. And this bomber is nowhere near done yet. Three stars to its name, 64 kills, not a scratch on it so far. That might be about to change as a horde of T1 interceptors from Rambo Turtle comes into frame from the cliffs. Finally have one air superiority fighter, and that is enough to finish that strap bomber off. However, <laughs> there's a second one over here with eight kills to its name already. Interceptors returning, trying to deal with this one now. Where was that ASF? It probably got shot down, but there's another one lurking over Shady's base. This time that strategic bomber getting held up in that pile of T1 Inties. Or maneuvering wasn't able to save it. Any more strats, UD? There's another one inbound from over here. So that is some good work. What's that done to the overall mass income from Team 2? Well, they are now off the pace by some 60 mass per tick. It's 380 odd to 328, something like that. 50, 60 mass behind now. <clears throat> And uh, you can just see all of the redundant mass points. The damage that's been inflicted by that bombing run. Very, very nice work there from UD. That's why it's oh so important not to fall too far behind. Waltzy Matilga uh, absolutely determined not to give up on the naval side of things. Trying to fight his way back into the top pond. Utilising a combination of wave break T2 torpedo launchers and these oblivion turrets on the beach behind him. Nice little bit of back and forth as Rambo Turtle tries to deny, but he can't repel firepower of the oblivion's magnitudes with those pitiful T1 frigates. However, a Salem might be able to stay out of range and cause some problems. Interesting, he didn't stay on the wave break. I probably would have stayed on, stayed on that, taken it down, and then switched over to the Oblivion turret. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. Six of one, half a dozen of the other, so to speak. Oh, he's not going to stay on it, though. It would be a critical error for Team 2 to allow Team 1 back into this pond. What's happening? I'm quite surprised, actually. So I don't know what happened to the horde of subs we saw earlier. There's been more interesting things going on, I'm afraid. But uh, Johnny Flash lost those somewhere at some point, and it hasn't resulted in the demolition of Gowron's navy. He has lost one naval yard. Those are probably the remnants of that sub-fleet. He badly damaged one other naval yard, but he's still got an operational navy and is already now sending in a combination of frigates, these Thunderheads and these Coopers, the T2 torpedo boats in towards the causeway where we have a, uh, a cruiser and a destroyer belonging to Flash both partially damaged strap bomber again from UD no kills to its name and taking some fire now those early advantages the gap in air cover gap in anti-air defense uh, 
advantage starting to slip away now as we approach 20 minutes. Mr. Shady with operational T3, T3 production facilities starting to pump out ASFs. Starting to see the emergence of things like the cruiser over here, but that might be about to go down, down to 100 hit points. Yes, in DD. Nice little snag there from Gowron. See, don't ride off the 100 rated player just yet. Plenty of room to maneuver. Plenty of time to show us what he's made of. Look at that. Strategic missile defense in 20 minutes. Never a terrible idea, especially on a Setton's map. But this has been pretty successful. So it started with the Oblivion turrets and the wave break. Matilda forced his way back into the top pond, has now got four operational naval yards. It's going to spam up a load more, and Palenkin has dipped his toe into the water as well to assist one operational naval yard for him just at the cliff edge. The torpedo launcher as well. So this is going to be harder now for Turtle to dislodge Team 1 from the top pond. And not a huge commitment to naval production from Team 2 in the bottom pond. Johnny Flash down here. We've got 41... Uh, actually, no, they're all T2 now. So four standard T2 naval yards and a fifth, which is obviously the HQ put out, has also got involved in the bottom pond, has a T2 naval HQ, his own slightly further up the coast. But it's pretty quiet, it has to be said. The one focusing on the eco side of things. Never really got to investigate how that little drop went. Other things were going on. Basically, this operation wasn't too badly affected, so the drop didn't really come to anything. <clears throat> Another valiant push from Rambo Turtle takes down three of those recently reconstructed naval yards. Wave break is gone. Tsunami torpedo launcher badly damaged over here. Let's see Matilda really struggling with the range on board these destroyers. Just not much he can do about it. Some support from UD, some air power would be very gratefully received, I'm sure. Looks like is going to answer that very call. Cool. Priority targets will be the cruisers, of course. The biggest threat to the torpedo bombers. Down they go in a single pass. One left, though, in the back. That is going to prompt a withdrawal for Rambo Turtle, I think. Run away! Brave Sir Robin. Yep, always a sensible decision facing odds like that. There's no inbound air cover from Team 2. In fact, Mr. Shady. Is he named Shady because he doesn't like to support his teammates? <laughs> There's just not much going on. He's still fleshing out his production facilities, but he's so far off the boil compared to UD. Look at that operational air matrix and it might just be the saving grace for team one because they would be well and truly scuppered in this top pond were it not for those torpedo bombers while they're tied up up there are we going to get some kind of push though in the bottom pond from Johnny Flash of destroyers, the odd cruiser in the mix down here. Token vessels joining the fray from Put Out. What's Put Out actually doing? Upgrading his comm to T3. Really, they're going to want him to uh, start pulling out the big guns. 
is their star player at the moment. UD, or at least the imposter UD, is carving them a new one. This is not looking too good, having looked really good. <laughs> Top pond for Team 2. Two more factories down, but this time it's on the other side of the map. It's Rambo Turtles Naval Yards which are under threat. But uh, torpedo bombers have finally dissipated. He's finally run out of aircraft. But in terms of air superiority numbers and therefore air dominance, what have we got? We've got 60 air superiority fighters on the field for UD. Mr. Shady... By comparison, we have six. A tenfold advantage in the air game for Team 1. That is mahusive, to say the, le the least. Put out moving towards the cliffs over here. Wants to get some more naval production in the top pond to join that other T2 naval yard he's got. A lot of build capacity down here, and interesting. So he's starting to spam out aircraft carriers. Is that another one he's working on? Looks like it. So this might be his uh, answer to this air problem that Team 2 are suffering with right now. With Mr. Shady being so far behind, he might just end up spamming aircraft carriers of his own and take the initiative but look at that that is a uh, a real reversal in the top pond Matilda shut out not once but twice from the naval side of things but managed to fight his way back in with assistance from UD and those torp bombers could this finally be the assault in the bottom pond though that we've been waiting for Gowron who's had a lot of time still some way behind his opponents. He has got assistance though from Palenkin. Three T2 naval yards spamming out combinations of destroyers with the odd bulwark vessel as well to supplement their defenses. Garon looking like at the very least he's gonna lose some structures here. Lost a shield gen. Is that all tactical missile defense? It was once upon a time. Hasn't been able to contend with the barrage of cruise missile fire coming in from those Seraphim cruisers. Nice Ravager if that can get completed. Although, I'll have to sit pretty close to the old coastline. That's its range. I mean, they're all sitting perfectly in the range of it for the time being, but I doubt they'll stay there. Gatling gun away. Destroyers away. Sensible decision. Threat now moving in from the north. Gowron really should be bringing those Coopers to bear, and you can see move pings going down from his teammates. Urging him to get into the fight. <coughs> Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight destroyers there for Johnny Flash. Versus four destroyers from Palenkin. A fifth from Gowron, and then some four torpedo boats, although one just bit the dust. Should be a relatively even exchange. What really could tip the balance would be if uh, put out stops spamming aircraft carriers and starts pumping out some battleships that really will be the end of this little encounter I should think hmm, upgrade on the way for waltzing Matilda starting T3 air factories we've we got now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with many more on the way 
for UD. Compare that to Mr. Shady. One, two, three, four, five. So, some ways behind. Not actually as far behind as I thought he was. He's caught up a, a tad. Like the addition of the Quantum Gateway, it's uh, moving towards the 30 minute mark in this game. Definitely want to start getting those support commanders out there. Support commanders are uh, a must for any long game. Lots and lots of inbound missiles going after some of these static destroyers. Nice work by Gowron moving them out the way. Tactical missile defense still just about keeping up with the inbound fire. A lot of extra missile firepower coming out of this strange nodule, nodule at the back of uh, these aircraft carriers, which is similar to Cat's Willy. <laughs> I don't know what else to describe it. That's what it looks like to me. I thought I spent an awful lot of time looking at my cat's willy, but uh, there we go. Moving on, let's check on the eco side of things. We've got uh, 1.2k generated income for Team 2, although he's it's sort of jumping between 1.2 and 1.3, and then it's 1.1k for Team 1. Overall, total mass accrued It's about a 30k difference. Something in that region, nothing too enormous. But uh, astonishing, Gowron still has control of this side island. Team 2 relenting just a little bit after that encounter. Palenkin's presence here a little bit too sturdy. Top Pond, what have we got? Rambo Turtle had not renewed his push up towards the main naval yards of Matilda since he was last ousted by that horde of torpedo bombers. Instead, he set a, a rally point sort of just slightly closer to his side of the middle of the pond. Nice formation now as this horde of T1 frigates and subs from Matilda move into range. Matilda says, yeah, maybe not. Moves his units backwards. It's all mostly T1 with the exception of the blazes, which we've got interspersed between the frigates. Check this out, though. Saucy little Percival move from Palenkin. Have they come right the way down, or have they come in off the sea down here? I think they might have hugged the bank of the causeway. Put out, trying to force them back out into the ocean with T1 spam. They'll happily sit in the foam here under bulwark shield coverage shoot those to pieces and then resume their attack on this forward position we've got a couple of units of t2 pd here and one very nice mass fab farm which is about to get exploded as soon as that shield capitulates Confluey, there it goes big old air ruckus above this mini fleet over here signalling that Mr. Shady finally has an air force worthy of some respect. I suspect, though, UD still has it far outmatched, numerically speaking. 169 with seven extra bingo on fuel there for UD. Mr. Shady, how are you doing, sir? 111. Not too shabby. Still slightly off the pace, but 
No longer hopelessly so. Another little mass fab farm under threat. Still under shield coverage, but that's about to go down. One more volley will do it. Oh, focusing in on the T3 mechs in the center. There we go. Look at that. Put a bit of damage on the mechs and let the volatility of the subsequent explosion take the rest of it out. Once you retarget the mass fab. Sensible decision. Oh, and a nice snag of a T3 reactor before the last of Percy goes down. Can you get two? Oh, there's 50 hit points remaining. Yes, he does. Lovely work there from Palenkin. Nice little attack. Put out, firmly put out by that maneuver. Moving his com forward towards the center of the causeway. Things in this game starting to heat up now. More significant damage being inflicted on key players and there's the big engage we were waiting for we know this will probably go Yudi's way the one ray of sunlight for team two will be that that's happening over the top of the aircraft carriers which currently belong to Donny, Johnny Flash I think they've been transferred over by put out the torpedo bombers went all the way over to the main base over here of Johnny Flash and then they targeted that T3 naval HQ of put outs managed to get that and then they're going to go after the HQ of Johnny Flash can they inflict enough damage are there enough torpedo bombers left our survey says eh -eh. doesn't look like it Johnny Flash will hold on to that comfortably some 16,000 hit points and climbing on that naval HQ Next round of torpedo bombers going after the destroyers in the center. We've actually got quite a nice clump of battleships in here. This is a nasty little fleet for Johnny Flash. Gosh, that's already been rebuilt. It's, well, up to T2 at any rate. That will need one more upgrade. Was a lot of build capacity in there put out as well pulling in a whopping 514 mass per tick but that's nothing compared to UD on team one look at that 835 mass income and it will be down to these mass fab farms that are going up just about everywhere it's like new builds around me I should be happy about it because it might mean that the house prices get to a point where my kids might be able to own one one day and yet I'm sort of not. I'm such a NIMBY. Not in my backyard. Forget my children and everybody else's. I just don't like people. <laughs> Except for you guys. You're fine. You can come live near me. But that's it. Nobody else. Another bombing run from UD. Not quite so successful this time. Targeting some of these T3 vessels. Of put out. Hello, Mr. Mavor on the way for Mr. Shady. Still a long way to go on that construction. Just about to reach 1,500 hit points. There it is out of 8,000. But we have a nuke. That's out from UD. Where is that headed? And... They have adequate nuke defense on Team 2 to defend. It's coming straight down the causeway. Put out is on the move for his comm, just in case he was the target. No interception yet. Ouch, that is going to take out a whopping amount of eco. He was at 552 before that connected, and he drops down to 387. And then it pings back up to 403, so... At least a good 150 mass wiped out there for put out. Four core mass taken out. That was a lovely nuke. He's going to wish he had nuke defense to shoot that puppy down. Say what you like about uh, Mr. Shady's air production capabilities. We saw him building anti-nuke some time ago. I think. Or did I imagine it? I'm sure it was him. That's pretty embarrassing. I don't know where he is now. There it is! I knew I didn't imagine it. And he's already got three anti-nukes loaded in that solo silo, so... Well done, you, sir. Anticipating what was to come. 
I love watching these fights, says UD. Don't just watch them, sir. You're playing. Get involved. Our rock player gave up on making navy. Referring to Garon there. I just think uh, it's hard when you're playing with more seasoned people, you know. He's only pulling in 178 mass per tick, and that's at the cliffs as well. Usually a uh, more lucrative area of the map than, say, the beach location on the other side. Though I suspect... I don't know, I think he is sitting on... Sitting on all the mexes he's supposed to be sitting on, but they're all uh, unupgraded back here, all sitting on T1s, look. He just hasn't sort of systematically gone around upgrading everything. He is trying, though. Working on T3s now. Two big fights going on simultaneously in both ponds. Johnny Flash with the edge, I think, in the bottom pond. Got three battleships belonging to Palenkin here. Now two. That wave of torpedo bombers comes in over the top and finishes that badly damaged off. Badly damaged one off in front. Roman class battleship about to go down in the top pond for Matilda. He's got a, another one there. And then it's all aircraft carriers in the T3 range. long left on the Mavor. Well, it's coming along pretty slowly. We are in the yellow. 2,900 hit points out of 8,000 done. Do we have any interesting toys on the way for Team 1? We've certainly got the eco for it. UD pulling in 1.1k now, thanks to all of these mass fab farms. That's grotesque quantities of eco. Just pumping more and more eco into more and more eco. At some point he should start spending it on some funky toys. Properly shut this game down. Strategic missile launcher about ready to fire once more. I'm surprised he's not spamming those or putting out some artillery. Support commanders in the bottom pond now spamming up tempests that could be a bit of a game changer lord knows they need something because it's not looking great in the bottom pond for them right at this very moment but another nuke away for UD could that be going after the fleet look at the sheer quantity of cruisers there I still think they need uh, Aegis cruisers in this game, or Aegis battle cruisers to shoot down nukes over water. But it was going deep anyway, it was going after Johnny Flash himself by the looks of things, but he was ready and waiting, all prepared, got his SMD in place, and he's worried about it getting tele-sniped by the looks of things because he's surrounding it with T1 point defense. Always a sensible precaution. Chastise him for that. Gains being made in the top pond. Look at the sheer disparity of naval firepower. Waltzing Matilda with no more battleships. He's got one left. Fresh one just rolling off. The conveyor belt put out the other side of things with seven battleships and then Rambo Turtle with a few of his own he's got five so the way this is looking right now without significant intervention from UD some real game-changing plays still looks like team one might lose both ponds and I've been saying that for about half an hour now but it's probably going to happen <laughs> the way things are looking another nuke out there goes the first tempest that was completed by UD gets an instant gibbed by 
Long range battleship firepower from down here, but another nuke out. This time it does look like it's going after the fleet. That's a sensible target prioritization. The last one got shot down. Why not use it to take out some battleships? Bosh! And at least three battleships bit the dust in that explosion. But still, several more remain mention these pesky cruisers. Lovely little clink hammer battery there on the coastline. Always a fan. Its own dedicated power sources. Could do it just some more. Some more T1P gens up the side. Long range cruise missiles though. Clattering into the shields. I think they've drifted out of range now. Tilda absolutely refusing to give up the battle. I think it's going to be GG, says Matilda. I mean, there's uh, plenty of room for this game so far. Just losing a pond by itself, or both ponds, is not the end of the game in of itself. Nothing much I can do to bail you out. And if you still lose, and you still lose, laughing my ass off. That's nice. What's going on over here? Aha! He's finally doing something with his outrageous quantities of income. And what's he doing? He's spending it on something to give him unlimited income. <laughs> Build some artillery, man, for goodness sake. But uh, that will, if that's allowed to be completed, of course, we've seen so many times. Paragon absolute nail in the coffin of your opponents if it's allowed to be completed. However, this Mavor now approaching 6k out of 8k HP and that will be hard to defend against. Yet another nuke out from UD. Where's it headed? Going after the battleships of Rambo Turtle in the top pond. Perfectly placed if you can land a nuke over here. No, he sails right overhead. It looked like that's where he was going. But it's going deep to the side island. My island, says Rambo Turtle. Yeah, it's gone, mate. Bathed in nuclear fire. And now distinctly radioactive body odor. Bosh! That's the end of you, sir. Although one T2 mechs just on the corner surviving for good measure. Just to remind people that there was once civilization there. There's not going to be ever any civilization left here by the looks of things. Finally, the side island is taken out. As if by reprisal, Gowron evicted from his natural expansion. There it goes. All structures destroyed. Naval yards out of commission. Gowron officially evicted from the bottom pond. Now his main base doing his level best to repel inbound battleship fire. Fat boy under construction. That will help if he's able to complete it and maintain shield coverage around his base. What have we got here? Gun upgrade. That's a, that's an interesting decision at this stage in the game. But then uh, he did go cyber in, so perhaps it's a misclick. Who can say? Anything is possible. Cyber players all up in arms after that one. Get some hate mail in my Cyber and de-radicalization channel on my Discord later for it, I'm sure. If you'd like to join it, guys, incidentally, it's a mid dollar a month. Get the premium cast content. Maybe we're done. Yes, it is. That's a whole set of new problems for Team 1. As the giant penis of doom targets its prey, which will surely be the Paragon, assuming that Team 2 have scouted it correctly. This is what Team 2 can see, and they have indeed scouted it and labelled helpful, helpfully. So that will be target number 1. It's almost done. That's how much income UD has got anyway, even without this. He's pulling in 1.2k 
mass per tick. And it's almost done. He's got one, two, three, four shields. Will that be enough to keep out the Mavor? Have to wait and see. Matilda about to be landlocked once again. He's just not allowed a navy. It is not, not for you, sir, this game. soaking up huge amounts of damage eventually gets killed off was getting a lot of repair work done on the fly by that horde of engineers sitting behind it lovely wave of torpedo bombers going after the experimental battleship another one of those sinks to the seabed new fat boy under construction incidentally he didn't keep the first one as base defense, he has sent it around the harbor area towards the front line, I guess, to assist Palenkin. But this is a team under siege right now. However, UD, with the outrageous income, and he's managed to complete the Paragon. That is up and running now. Just look at it. He's pulling in 3.3k, his current demand. That's limitless resources for the, those of you that don't play the game. He now no, has, no longer has to worry about income at all. That will satisfy all resource demands that are placed on it. And of course, he's going straight for a Mavor himself. So that should build pretty darn quickly. Can he protect this long enough? against the Mavor to get his own artillery in place? That's the question. There's a lot of shield coverage around Mr. Shady's Mavor. But the wider picture, as far as Team 1's concerned, does not look great. I think you have to concede that. Front line on the causeway just getting picked apart. Support commanders doing their level best. Lower order employees whose lives are not Strategic particularly important. Detected. There they go. Another nuke out over here. He has got a salvation up already. He's working on another. First order of business usually is to secure a second paragon for redundancy. Doesn't look like he's going for that strategy this time around. Lovely nuke there in the Bay Area of Matilda, wiping out huge quantities of vessels. Sadly, though, mostly just T1 frigates. Vessels that Rambo Turtle probably won't miss. And of course, the natural target of those salvations will be the Mavor of Mr. Shady. Has he got enough shielding to protect it? Salvation's notoriously adept at depleting shield coverage around their intended target. Their widespread. Oh, this is not looking great. Oh, shields collapsing under the weight of inbound salvation fire. That one's going to land right on top of the Mavor, take it down to around 5,300 hit points. Takes a lifetime to build and a moment to lose it. Mr. Shady just about keeping up with the shielding demands, taking some damage here and there. The Paragon looking pretty healthy. So far, Mavor not able to crack this nut, not with all the support commanders and build capacity around, spamming up new shields. We've got a lot of shielding here for UD. 19 or so. Laser done. Oh, uh, of uh, course. Cool. So the Cybran goes, let's, let's telly. He's got the microwave laser. Oh, but we've got teleport support commanders in from put out. That's how they're going to deal with it. Doesn't look like Rambo Turtle's going to have to get his hands dirty at all. And they've done it. They've taken out the Paragon. 
massive nuclear explosion. But there is still the little question of the inbound salvation fire. Can they hold on to the Mavor? It's down to 3,800. Where will the Mavor be targeting next? That's the question. Palenkin's forward base in tatters. Inbound Mavor shells going after the front line by the looks of things. Big old group of gunships inbound for UD. Only T2 though. Palenkin evacuating the front line does not like the look of that in the slightest. So he's bringing his commander back towards, uh, well, the Masfab farms essentially. Which he's got to be careful because... It looks like that's where the Mavor has targeted, and there's not an awful lot of shielding here. <laughs> well, there you go, Sir Palenkin demonstrating why standing next to a mass fab farm isn't great, but oh my god, that was like the last shell as well. So look at that, just before the Mavor <laughs> dies, it manages to pick off most of the mass fab farms around there. And, of course, poor old Palenkin, who happened to be standing in the wrong place at the wrong time. They do, however, still have artillery pieces of their own. They've got two salvations. Did they finish their own Mavor? Yes, they did. And what is that targeting, I wonder? Salvation's going after Mr. Shady's main base, wanting to suppress that position. Hope he doesn't get any more Mavors up and running. Another Salvation targeting put out over here. Oh, he's going for a Yolana Oss, but I don't think he's going to manage that. That must have been scouted. He's drawn an awful lot of attention there. Mavor shells sailing long and going after the Mass Fab farm down here. And what have we just seen on the other side of the field? We've seen a Com standing too close to a Mass Fab farm. And that's about to have its shield coverage depleted. Johnny Flash needs to get a wriggle on. He hasn't done so, so he's going to get caught out. Johnny Flash gone in a flash. We get 55 minutes into the game and suddenly they're dropping like flies. Two players out in two minutes, if that, in fact. And that mass fab farm lying in ruin. Lots of other T3 reactors and T2s put out... Also receiving fire, moving his comm now. He's down to 6,200 hit points, but takes a direct hit from a Mavor shell, and he's gone. And that's Team 2's star player out of the picture at 55 minutes. Unreal. UD coming in with the clutch Mavor plays has just... He lost his Paragon. He lost his teammate and half of his... Mass fabs and then killed off arguably the two most dangerous opponents. Mr. Shady with a strap bomber attempt. I'm not sure what the main target of that was. It was perhaps he was going after some of these salvations, hoping maybe for a bit of a chain reaction on these mass fab farms. Who knows? But UD, despite losing huge quantities of eco, despite losing the Paragon, he's still pulling in 1.1k. Mr. Shady pulling in 1.4k. That must be reclaim. No way he's pulling in that much legitimately. He is, however, losing reactors like there's no tomorrow. How's that doing? Your power, not great. Oh, he's got all the power in the world. Look at that. 20,000 power momentarily there for a time. Net positive. He has inherited all of Put Out's eco, all of Johnny Flash's eco. Launch detected. Another nuke out, presumably from UD. Yes, indeed, sir. Where's that one headed? Going straight into the thick of Rambo Turtle's fleet. Sitting in Matilda's Bay area. This time, it's not just frigates present. There's a lot of key weaponry there. Oh, dear. 
that's pretty juicy. At least one battleship went up in that, but lots of T2 vessels. The other surrounding battleships barely impacted by it. They do fare well. As long as they're not hit directly by it in that sort of inner collision ring. But the once proud main base, the air production facilities of Mr. Shady, getting torn asunder by that salvation fire and there's nothing he can do about it. He's got no standoff capabilities at all. No one on Team 2 does. They've got the, the both ponds, but what's it worth? UD can sit back. He's got too much air power. He's got too much eco. And he's got the weapons to impact them directly from the safety of his own home. Rambo Turtle getting smashed, presumably, by yet another Mavor shell sneaking its way in. Apologies for missing that one, but hard to catch all of them. And now it is a 1v3. Poor old Mr. Shady, who's seemed like he's been a little bit out of his depth against Yudi in the air game. Now fighting this battle all by himself, just as we approach the one hour mark. Got a nice little group of strats over here. There's the GG well played from Rambo Turtle. Always nice to meet a, uh, a nice, well mannered player. On you, sir. Nothing draws more contempt from me than a bit of uh, BM. A huge czar from Waltzing Matilda brought in to try and clear out this bay area now. Supplemented by a massive horde of Spectre gunships. Have a quick look at air power generally. We've got 96 there. We're going to have different groups, though, different racial groups, I suspect, of air superiority fighters. So some nine there, and then 98 or so there. And then three there. So really, it's not a huge amount. We're looking at about 110 fighters for Team 2, Mr. Shady. UD has, wow, a lot of them. He needs to get some air staging facilities because a lot of them are out of fuel. He's got 53 fuel fighters and 79 that are out of fuel. That's not a great tack to send your strap bombers in, Mr. Shady. Straight in through the pile of UD's waiting fighters, but he's just so desperate to take out some of these artillery pieces. And he's got at least one of them. Was it worth the investment? And he's lost his AS ASFs as well into the bargain. Yes, he took down the Salvation. Still another one there. And there's uh, the Mavor. Oh, and another Salvation. Let's just see how many Salvations Yudi's got operating. So it's, just, it's three of them. Three Salvations and the Mavor. That's a lot of firepower. Where's the third one there? What am I even looking at here? Where's the other one? There's another one around somewhere. That doesn't lie. Answers in the comment section below. I'm sure there's a whole bunch of you going, Garl is fucking there. <laughs> that was fricking, by the way. It's a family show. Fricking is totally acceptable, at least in the UK. Give up, UD, says Mr. Shady. I mean, I wouldn't be giving up in this position. I think that was probably tongue-in-cheek, though. A nice little group of strategic missile subs up here. Not currently loaded with any nukes, but support commander teleport. They are upgrading. Potential threat there, recognized by Palenkin. But defense satellite from Gowron hovering overhead and no shielding. Perhaps these will be the next target. There it is. 
rooted to the spot. A couple more volleys like that. Should be able to snag at least one of them. That was some good scouting work from Team 1, recognising the threat there. A little supplementary base from Gowron, a little bit further back, that's where he situated his Novak satellite centres. Fortunately, not quite out of the reach of those pesky Seraphim cruisers and their ridiculous cruise missile based firepower. Ah, why wait for the defense satellites when you've got salvations? Did any of them manage to teleport? I think they were mostly upgrading at the time. Strategic launch detected. Another nuke out from UD. Where be that headed? That going. That going. That's going. Into this little mini bay area. And after a couple of these battleships. At least three in the blast radius there that might go down. Four, I think, into the bargain. But would Yudi even be wanting to get back into the naval game right now? I suspect probably not. That being said, if he can just whittle these numbers down. Strategic launch detected. Oh, there was a couple of support commanders up there, I think. So, Shady either airdropped some up, moved them up on their tods, or got a couple to teleport. But they didn't manage to go anywhere. Sensitive. Oh my word, Yudi's right there. Can he sneak a nuke in? Bosh! What a wonderful set of nukes! Amazing play! Yudi is out! All the infrastructure, of course, will survive and be transferred over, presumably, to Matilda. Where did that come from? That's from the battleships over here. Seraphim battleships, of course, act like the uh, strategic missile submarines from the other races. They can produce nukes, but wow! Hasn't that just changed the dynamic of this game? Suddenly it's a 1v2, the 1300-rated player getting killed off. And just quit. I want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was not my idea to put out. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And so do all the, the players by the looks of things, except for UD. Fair enough. So very nice maneuver there from Mr. Shady, who somehow is still in this. Uh, he's still got... I mean, let's not beat about the bush. His infrastructure has taken an absolute battering. Look at it. But he's still... He's pulling in 1.5k. And Waltzing Matilda, after inheriting all of Yudi's stuff, is only pulling in 1.1k. So... He's actually ahead on paper. Yeah, and he's in control of the bottom pond. He's lost control of the top pond. And just look... I don't even know what I'm looking at here. This is just ridiculous. It's like Noah's Ark, except all of the other animals aren't invited. <laughs> Engineers went marching in by two by two billion. There they go. Absolutely outrageous amounts of uh, engineer spam. Probably wants to tell those guys to hold fire lest he give up their location. Because that would be a useful tool for a se separate uh, nuke attack since that last one worked out so well. One hour, six minutes in, and this game took a very strange tack. We went 54 minutes, I think it was, before the first casualty, something like that. And then suddenly they were tumbling like dominoes. And now we're in this weird situation. Mr. Shady... Putting, out, pulling in a lot more eco than his opponents. They outnumber him 2-1 to one in terms of player count. Gowron not really in a position, though, to do much of anything. It's basically a 1v1, ostensibly. But uh, Team 1 holding the magic artillery button, magic artillery weapons, happy to sit back, turtle in, 
and pummel him to dust at range three salvation so there we have it is it still three or has he got more than that it seems like he's got an awful lot so there's two there one next to the Mavor and of course the Mavor itself oh he's got four so there's a fourth one where is it where's the other one it's like one of them pinging me <laughs> it's there Guile oh my god it's upsetting answers in the comment section below to tell me where it is because it's pissing me off now this is why I don't play the actual game guys actually see the important important parts of it but this it can't go on forever if Mr. Shady can't find a way to take out all of those artillery pieces he's just going to get ground up into bread <clears throat> Mr. Shady might be pulling in 1.3k I mean that's down from 1.5k so we're starting to see the impact of all of this artillery fire what's he currently working on that's the question and is he able to spam up enough of whatever it is I mean we've got a lot of air factories out pumping out spy planes for the time being More mass fab farms going up in smoke. He's down to 1.2k now. He has got to find some way in. Be it strap bomb snipes, something. Failing that, some way to just snipe these two commanders. If he can get Matilda out of the picture, Gauron just might not be able to maintain this by himself. It might be too much of a stretch. large fighter screen covering this front line here of the main base territory shooting down a lot of those spy planes but they've got a decent read on this section at least sensing impending threat Matilda wisely beefing up his commander with some personal shields and then heavy shield he's also got an array of T1 point defense around him and some wall sections, I'm not really sure what they're about. Look at this. Mr. Shady, having moved his comm all the way over here, and he's actually got the teleporter and T3 engineering upgrade on his commander. So could we see a tele-snipe attempt? just discussed. That's not a great position to drop into. Probably going to get you killed. And uh, we have a lot of torpedo... Oh, there are torpedo bombers actually. They're solaces. Oh no, we do have some shockers as well, so we have some strats lying in wait. So it, it would be a tough ask to get in here and kill both of these commanders before getting strap bombed to death. You'd have to really get in fast and somehow set up an impregnable position with your comm. And whatever he's planning, he's not planning it right this second. Happy to sit back. One hour, 11 minutes and 30 seconds gone. And Matilda now almost more or less at parity in terms of eco. So that huge advantage Shady was enjoying a moment ago has now gone thanks to all of that salvation and Mavor firepower. Spy planes are flying overhead. They must be getting really antsy right now expecting snipe attempts. But waltzing Matilda with that double shield. That's 25,000 HP on the extra shield. On top of his 14,000 base health. Of course he's got all the extra firepower of these T1 point defense around him. I would be going bananas. I'd be building T2 around it as well. Because that has to be the big play that you would expect. 
GC just chilling on the causeway there. UD says, uh, get it moving. Stop giving him time to react. There's still plenty of things to take out detected. here. More mass fab farms, although they're not even active right now. Suggests Mr. Shady having serious power problems. He's had to shut those down. He is. Look at that. Deep in the red on power production. And that's a situation that's probably only going to get worse with time. Another nuke sent over here against this little fleet. It's going to take out a handful of aircraft carriers. Some minor escort vessels around it. We could have ended this game when I made para. I mean, you could have made a second para. That would have helped, UD. Always go. As soon as you... The first thing you do, once you've completed the first para, is start building a second para. Always. Get some redundancy there. Make it harder for your opponents. Another salvation on the way, and it's just getting worse. Look at this. Matilda completely broken out of this top pond over here. Forced Mr. Shady right the way back. He is moving up his strategic missile submarines, though. How many has he got? He's got six. Was there for a minute. I was like, it sounded like a Codwin. No, must have been a support commander somewhere. None of these are loaded yet, but you can see how close they are. They're probably all about three quarters built on their next nuke. They're going to nestle in right next to the coast there in this little inlet. And wait for an opportunity to spam some nukes. Surely they've got decent nuke defense after UD was killed off via that very mechanism. He would expect decent anti-nuke coverage. I'm actually amazed that there is still so much infrastructure left to kill. We have, of course, got support commanders kicking around who are building new things all the time, but this is the nature of Settons. It's such a wide area to cover even with the outrageous quantities of artillery and wide impact artillery as well. Still taking forever to dismantle Mr. Shady's eco. Both Mr. Shady and Waltzing Matilda down to 1k a beast now on generated eco. Still, he lurks in the bottom pond, motionless. I'm not repeating that, but uh, amusing things being said in chat, put it that way. I'm almost surprised that we're not seeing more in the way of ground units, GCs being sent down the causeway. That GC has died somewhere, probably died to some air power. We've got some revenants down here. Now, 16 minutes in, Mr. Shady just going to have to go for something. You get the idea that this is his big play. And they're all loaded. Two, four, six nukes ready to go on the strategic missile submarines. You've got a wave of spy planes moving up through the top pond. So he'll probably want to get a read. He's going to mask, I imagine, the intent with these strats. Are the strats going to be going after strategic missile defense? I wonder. Trouble is, as soon as he launches, if he's going after Matilda himself, he's going to have to fire a, strategic launch detected. a wide dispersal pattern. There's the first strategic one. And they're going off sequentially. Strategic launch detected. Which of course suggests that he's launch detected. targeting each one at a slightly strategic different place. What's the anti-nuke coverage like, Mr. Grimsdale? Answer. 
It's absolutely heinous. All of them Strategic are moving in with impunity. Today. Matilda evacs perfectly. Oh, this could get him. This could get him. Oh! Sanka, you dead man? I don't know. Did he die? Not seeing any notifications. Are you kidding me? Nothing here is alive except for Matilda. Oh my goodness. Somehow, he's still alive. 7,000 hit points. That was like the scene from Pulp Fiction. I want you to acknowledge what happened here was a miracle. That's insane. <laughs> That's literally insane. There's nothing else alive here. There aren't even insects alive here anymore. Somehow, Matilda survives. <laughs> That's unbelievable. His subs have now been rumbled, though. Zars searching. Well, maybe not rumbled that significantly. Flies straight overhead. These things have torpedo capabilities, remember? Or depth charges, Strategic rather. Launch detected. Another nuke out. This time... Oh, there was one left. One sub that didn't get the memo. Is that one going to finally be able to take out the Salvations? Finally. Nope. Because there was nuke coverage around. But still three anti-nuke missiles in that silo. So that was the perfect, perfect attack vector down this side. None of it was covered. And by sheer blind luck, Matilda survived with 7,000 hit points left on the commander. That's rough. That is... A rough outcome for Team 2. Team 1 still has functional artillery. It's still peppering the landscape down here. And all Shady can do is sit back and watch. Mind you, he's still ahead after that nuke barrage. So Matilda on 712 mass per tick. Mr. Shady pulling in 899. But he's not doing anything with it. He was pulling in mass and using strategic it to build launch, nukes there of course in the strategic missile submarines but he's not funneling it into anything else and you can't really blame him because trying to get anything going when you're under this much sustained firepower under this much battery from range it's nigh on impossible another nice nuke Targeted this little fleet over here. Again, thinning it out just a smidge. What's going on down here? Continental belonging to Gowron, sent to the bottom corner, presumably on some kind of scouting mission. One hour, 20 minutes in this farcical game. Absolutely absurd. The two comms pretty close to each other once again, right up at the back. Tilda and Galron. Want to be a little bit careful here. They don't want to give an opportunity to kill off both of them. Now, to the newbies out there, you might think, well, this seems like a, a perfect opportunity now to teleport in and go for the kill. Uh, yes, were it not for all of these strats and gunships lying in wait, the chances of getting both of these comms in that exchange, remote to say the least, I think it's fair to say. How many kills on these things now? 75 kills for the Mavor, 17 for that Salvation, 6 on that one, 31 on that one, 28 on that one. Leave it, but we're finally seeing a transfer of control in the top pond, I think, bit by bit. <coughs> Huge numbers of T1 naval yards have been spammed up by Matilda, who's just pumping out as much T1 as possible. The engineer spam that we saw initially has been converted into Aurora spam. 
looks like it's just been sent directly at the naval yards down there at the edge of the screen. Ooh, you need to be a little bit careful here, Sunshine. Scout planes buzzing around. They might make you con. Mr. Shady in somewhat of a precarious situation over there. And look at what we have here. Strategic Torpedo bombers. Detected. One strategic missile sub left, I think, out of that pile we saw earlier. Oh, no, there's a couple more. No, they're sub hunters. So yeah, out of that, what looked like it could have been a monumentally successful play turned out to be rather doomed in the end. Only one of those subs remaining. A handful of solaces making their way to enemy territory just to get themselves shot down. That's something to do, isn't it? Support commanders setting up shop in the bottom pond, trying to spam up experimental aircraft carriers and the like. It's one way to try and get some infrastructure, but just eating a Mavor shell right away, straight down to 4,800. He was already in the yellow, so I think it was the second shell he took, but the next one will definitely get it. Bish, bash, bosh. Straight to the seabed for you, sir. team, if anything, is going to come out with a manoeuvre which is going to flip this game. Ooh, Chris engaging the fleet is absurd. Mass tinfoil Aurora spam tickling away at this galaxy class battleship on their way past. Still have got quite a few Engineers in the mix here, probably reclaiming as they go. Well, there doesn't seem to be a lot, lot of it, but that was probably the theory behind it. Can't do anything anyway. Mr. Shady getting a lot of advice from his deceased teammates. A bit helpful so far. You can telly behind their airbase and try and make a tactical missile launcher play. Yes, he could. And yes, he's done so. So, Mr. Shady wants to get a uh, stealth gen up. Because that is what they can see. If they're paying attention, that is visible to them at the moment. Until that commander builds a stealth gen. That should have been the first thing he built, really, once he got there. And there it disappears. So he did get the memo eventually. There's the stealth gen. Now, who's in range? Gowron is there. Not the target he wants. Matilda all the way down here. Can he hit him from there? Yes, he can. Can he get through the shield, though? He's going to need an awful lot of tactical missile launchers, and he's going to need an awful lot of luck as well. To hope that Matilda's not paying attention and doesn't move his com once those missiles have been fired. No reason for there to be anything, any kind of tactical missile defense in around this area. Until they're still on the move. Strategic there you go. Detected. So this is some kind of play. I'm glad we're seeing something. Mobile eco from the support commanders under some relative safety of the the water spamming up experimentals under the water. Oh, this is this the final nuke they will need to clear out this little bay area? Yes it is. Oh one two cruisers remain after that latest nuke. Matilda just south of the Mavor. That's the furthest back tactical missile launcher, still well in range, but 
potentially I don't know I don't think that shield will get in the way but certainly two shields will block a lot of inbound damage and then on top of it we've got the 25,000 hit points of the personal shield and the 14,000 hit points of the com so I don't know how many missiles that is but it's a lot and he's already teleported out of there he's gone back down to the bottom right hand corner didn't want to outstay his welcome I sympathize but I'm concerned that that's not enough tactical missile launchers just for safety I would have probably have liked to have gotten I don't know 10 more they're loaded and it really is it's a one one shot trick this because as soon as it's rumbled better believe there's going to be gunships or strap bombers moving in to take these out and those comms will not be standing still for anybody <clears throat> just think if they'd done this really early on they could have maybe taken out the Mavor and uh, the Salvation maybe saved put out Johnny Flash but then ooh, I don't know it happened so quickly it was all in the space of a couple of minutes so maybe not. Monkey Lords moving up the causeway. They've been spotted by a patrolling Tsar, however. There's not much they can do about it. There is no air power left for Team 2. And look at this. They've been evicted from the back. Just slowly getting encircled, Mr. Shady. He has to make something work with these TMLs or some other miraculous play. <laughs> this is pain. <laughs> they are struggling to end this game, it has to be said. We're nearly at one and a half hours game time. I'm not sure what's taking him so long. I feel like I failed. I could have made... I could make one of my teammates way much make ender before you I don't think English is his first language or maybe he's just tired and in a rush but all of these launchers up here are fully loaded these are nearly fully loaded and there's the attack command one of them I don't know what happened there one of them blew up on its way out is the comm still? Yes, he is. Might, from that trajectory, it might have to go through three shields. It might sail over the top of this one. But it's been spotted. And that might be the end of Team 2's hopes. And only one missile gets through. And it barely registers. Takes about a fifth of the shield off. So yeah, ten more missiles might have done it probably would no it definitely would have done it what I'm talking about 10 more missiles to have been safe and that's all he would have done and then it would have been Gowron left to operate all this but I mean at this point would it even be losable even with a low rated player bug under construction over here but they just can't get anything going there's no air power to keep any ground based experimentals safe there's no way to get any infrastructure together to build air power to keep experimentals safe. They can just carry on pounding you to dust. And look at this. The horde of spam that made its way through the canyon now. Just thinning out everything. Mr. Shady sitting by his lonesome in the bottom right hand corner. Gunships en route to kill off these TAC missile launchers. It was a good effort, but uh, I think it looks like Mr. Shady might be done here. Zars tidying up this little safe haven. That was the worst use of TML I've ever launch. seen. Detect Steady on. That was unnecessary. I mean, it could have worked. He just needed more missile launchers. Like I say, another 10 for redundancy. That would have would have gone well. Nuke 
out from that one remaining sub, but this time that vector is covered and covered handsomely. Two more left in the clip on that silo. No route through for nukes over there. And look at this now. We've got uh, Solis T3 torpedo bombers, which is going to be picking off these support commanders now, which represents the last of the meaningful income which Mr. Shady is receiving. He's down to 458 mass per tick. He's got no way to produce any units. He is well and truly butter battered, basted and cooked. Bug gets shot down. And now it is just drip, drip, drip as these T3 torp bombers kill off these support commanders one by one. Billy, instead of teleport, I was raging, texting at my teammates. <laughs> Starting tactical missile. So he is going for something. Oh, that's where he's gone. So he's teleported in the side pond. He is now switching up to a Billy nuke. He's got the tactical missile nuke upgrade. He's gone straight for tactical nuke. He's finished that nicely. Might get one off here, but he's been rumbled. That's what they can see. Well aware of the potential threat. And those torpedo bombers are coming back. Straight after Mr. Shady. And uh, he is only about a third of the way done for that nuke. A lot of those torps are landing on the beach. But a lot of them will get through. And it won't take many to kill the com off. He will not get to fire that Billy Nuke, I don't think. Which is disappointing, but it was only going one way. Bosh, one hour, 33 minutes, arguably 34 minutes. What a game. Bit of a lag, it's not lag first, a bit of a, a lagging game in terms of action. Shall we say lag's the wrong word? Gives you the wrong connotations. But lagging game in terms of action for the last 25 to 30 minutes or so. But still, an interesting conundrum for Mr. Shady of what he could do. Like I say, if a few more attack missile launchers, maybe, I mean, so I said an extra 10 for redundancy. Maybe he didn't need that many. Might have needed maybe another 4 or 5. But 10 definitely would have done it. And then it might have been a different game. Then he might have been able to claw his way back in against Garon. But uh, it wasn't to be. Highly entertaining nonetheless. A little bit of a change. I hope you enjoyed it, guys. Apologies for that huge break in programming. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, I have just been sick as a dog. I've been, I've had some sleep issues for a long time now, so my immune system is shot. And then I got norovirus, and then I got tonsillitis. It was awful. So that explains my hiatus. But I am back now. Expect more regular content going forward. Very exciting stuff. And if you want to get more, if you've seen everything, do check out the Patreon, guys. It's the best way to support me. I mean, a dollar a month. I have no plans to increase the price anytime soon either. Uh, and it gives you access to the Discord. It gives you... Uh, what else it gives you? You get free extra content. It's not free because you're paying for it, but you know what I mean. Extra content. May, most weeks, I try to get it every week that I do a cast I try to get a premium cast out as well and uh, there's some 70 something casts up on that side of things already so do check it out guys and come and hang out with the little community we've got going on over there it's all good times well I hope you enjoyed it as I say more to come from me in the future but until next time stay well and stay safe this is Guile signing out